Welcome to my channel, where there are interesting and equally sensational stories. Listen to today's story. My life is a wreck. There isn't a soul in the world I can talk about this with. I don't know if I need advice, a pep talk, or what. I use my main account for memes and other BS. But I made this throwaway because I'm going mad trying to cope. Life was pushed me to the edge, and I'm struggling to find my integrity. Yet I questioned what are the righteous things to do, say, and think. I guess to begin, I need to explain that I'm typing this in a hospital room. Yesterday, about 7.30 a.m., my wife and I were involved in a wreck. I came out with only a few cuts and bruises. Mary, my wife, suffered a crushed shoulder, broken collarbone, three broken ribs, and a collapsed lung. They expect her to fully recover, for now, they have her heavily sedated. Having to type this out on a phone is a daunting task. But at the moment, I have the time to push through even if I'm not sure I have the world to do it. I wouldn't be posting in this sub if things were perfect with our marriage, obviously. I just could never imagine my wife being unfaithful in any way. My heart is broken. I feel incomplete. Like, part of me is missing and saddest of all. That part is sitting a mere three feet away from me. I had felt us growing apart over the last three months, but I couldn't come up with a reason why. We're both 34. Mary and I have known each other since we were children. We began dating in high school and all the way through college. She's the only woman I have ever done anything of a physical nature with. Up until recently, she could say the same. We married a year after college and had her first child, Michael, a year later. Three years after my son was born, Carrie, our daughter began a life of me trying to spoil her rotten. I love my kids more than life itself. If not for them, I'm not sure I would be here right now. They were not involved in the wreck. Thank God. They were spending the night at my parents. We were due to fly down to Florida for a cruise yesterday afternoon. Obviously, that is all cancelled. But my wife decided to go out with her best friend. Even though I urged her to get home and not drive around in the snow. She swore she and her best friend, Rebecca, were just going to have a few drinks since they wouldn't see each other for a week. I went to bed and slept like a baby until about 5 a.m. I got up and looked out the window to see my wife's car was not up front but we'd gotten several more inches of snow. I assumed Mary and Becca got a little too drunk and crashed at her place. I threw some clothes on and got into my SUV. Before I left, I texted Mary to tell her not to drive that the snow was too deep and I was coming to get her. It remained on unread. I cannot guess how many times I have wondered what would happen if she'd read that text. I'd still be a living a lie. I'd still have a gut feeling but I wouldn't be in the utter misery I now find myself. I got to Becca's and pulled up in front of her condo. I looked at the message again, and it still had not been read. I had actually hoped Mary would read it and be ready when I arrived. But I resigned myself to the fact that I'd have to go in and wake her. The front door was unlocked, so I walked in and looked to the TV room to my right. There was nobody passed out on the sofa. Rebecca's bedroom was downstairs, and I didn't want to wake her. So I took the stairs up to her guest room and opened the door. Then my life ended. I remember walking into the room and seeing two heads peeking out from the covers. I remember leaning down to pull the comforter toward me. I even remember seeing my wife laying her head on some guy's shirtless chest. The next thing I remember was Becca, Marie, and some half-naked guy I'd never seen trying to pull me off of it. I'd probably be in jail right now if they hadn't, but I honestly don't remember a damn thing. So right or wrong, I don't really feel too bad about that. My wife, on the other hand, well, that changes from minute to minute these days. When I came to my senses, the dude said he'd get his buddy to the hospital. Mary bawled her eyes out while Rebecca and I screamed it out. I told her and my wife, I was leaving and she had five minutes to be in my car or to not bother coming home. She was there in three. Really not a good idea to be angry driving in snow. Even with four-wheel drive. 
but it was another vehicle that veered into our lane and forced us through the guardrail. That's what caused Marie's injuries. The car rolled. Thank God for airbags, but we lived. The kids don't even know we had a wreck. I haven't called anyone. I probably should have. But this wasn't just a wreck. My life has been wrecked, and I'm trying to gauge the damage before I start bringing others into the situation. I'm numb, and yet I hurt like hell, and not from the wreck. I feel like I don't even know the person laying in that hospital bed. I want to ask her so many damn questions, but I really don't want to know any of the answers. She obviously no longer loves me. No one with a soul could cheat on somebody they love. So I have to ask her if she ever loved me. And now that she has cheated, would I ever want her to love me again if that were possible? I don't know the specifics of when she first cheated, but in my book, the instance she did, our marriage ended. The vows were broken. She ended our marriage, and we are no longer man and wife. I don't need a divorce attorney to nullify my marriage. She's already done that. Therefore, I am no longer under obligation to the vows I gave. A huge part of me wants to just walk out of this room. I want to call their parents, tell them what she did, and what happened, and then let them know she is their problem again after all these years. We said for better or for worse than I meant it, but we are no longer married. Part of me wants to leave her a note and tell her too bad worse happened to come after she ended our relationship. The only thing that is keeping me in this dang room is my children. I want to see them so badly right now but I have some scratches on my face and neck. They'd know something happened if they saw me. As much as I feel my wife has defiled herself and her family, my kids need her. I thought I had a life partner. And as horrible as she ended up being, children need a mom in their life. They're going to be talks. I'm not qualified to have, and I wouldn't know where to begin. There are going to be injuries that need kisses instead of being told to walk it off. I'm a damn good father, but I can't be a mother too. Please, someone help me. How can I sit here and look over someone who has stabbed me in the back so cruelly? Should I call her parents to come? What do I tell him? I really don't want to be here, especially with her parents. If I don't tell them what she did, they're going to know I'm pissed off. What in God's name do I tell my children? Yeah, I can tell them we're in a wreck, but I'm not the kind they can fake emotion. Obviously, my wife does it with ease, but when I load someone, it shows on my face, they will know I am angry at their mother. How the hell did my life come to this? I already know I need to see a lawyer. I figured that much out, but how do I handle this? It took so long to get approved that I didn't think my post had posted. I just started getting notifications. So I'm sorry for not responding sooner to people that made comments trying to help. All right, community. You're up. Cronach starts us off. First of all, take a breather. Yes. You should call parents and ask them to take care of her because you are mentally and physically in no condition to help her, even if you would want to. Also, tell them what she did. Don't start to lie for your wife. She has lied enough, and these lies need to end right now. You need someone to talk to and to let your emotions out. So look for a good friend or a family member that you trust and talk to them. Don't make any life-altering decisions right now while your emotions are so raw. What you need now is distance from your wife, and time to understand and process what she did here. This was not a one-time thing or something that happened out of a moment. This was long planned and probably her long-term affair partner, maybe not even her first affair partner. If she has stayed before at Becca's place, then you better expect to know now why she stayed there. Please stay away from alcohol and drugs. They won't help you. Your marriage is over, and the woman you thought she was never existed in the first place. That was only the idea you had of her. Now you know who she is and what she's capable of. And sooner or later, you need to ask yourself the question. If you would ask this woman to be your wife as well, or if that kind of woman is not a woman, you would want by your side. In the end, she never wanted to come clean, never wanted to end this, and keep on to make decisions for her affairs and against you. She got support in that by her best friend, but in the end, this all only happened because she wanted this to happen. 
Good luck and stay strong. And please get tested for STDs. Better safe than sorry. The next chime in comes from Odd Damage 4689. I want to call her parents. Tell them what she did. And what happened. Let them know what happened. And let them know she is their problem again after all these years. Do it. Just do it. At some point, you will have to anyway. Tell them everything what happened. They need to take care of her because you are physically mentally exhausted. Dude, what are you waiting for? Don't sit there and look over. Stop grieving. It's time to protect yourself. You don't know for how long it's been going on. Gather evidence. Talk with Becca. Record it with a phone or voice-activated recorder. Check wife's phone or mail. Lawyer up. And find what's your options. Get STD test. You may need a therapy too. One more thought coming from Long Debt Man. OP. Call her parents and yours. Tell everybody. Affairs live in the dark. Also, if you do decide on reconciliation with your wife, Rebecca is out of your lives forever, if not reconciliation possible. Your wife cheated, but her best friend helped make it happen instead of stopping it and protecting her friend's marriage. Moving on. My sister-in-law cheated and she's mad at me. I found out my sister-in-law, husband's sister, was cheating on her husband for the last year, maybe two years. My husband confronted her. She admitted to it. The next day, she texted me begging me not to tell her husband. So I responded back trying to convince her to tell him herself. I told her I was going to give her time to figure out how to tell him, but if she doesn't, I would eventually have to say something. Her husband was already suspecting for months. The next day, she tells him, but in the aftermath of it all, she doesn't respond when I reach out. She erased my phone number from her contacts. She removes me from all social media and avoids me in person. Why is she mad at me when all I did was urge her to tell the truth and living a lie and fix her marriage or be done with it? She is the one who had an affair with her son's best friend's father, who also happened to be his soccer coach. She lied to her family every single day and cheated on her husband every day, but she's mad at me. Also, she never even came to me woman to woman to discuss this affair, if she needed help or advice. The only conversation we had about it was when she begged me not to tell. It was information I found out on my own, so I didn't feel like I was obligated to keep it hush. Can someone please let me know what I did wrong? Please explain to me why she is mad at me, upset, I would understand, but she's angry, like I destroyed her life, mad. Our first response comes from Sinmar Zero. She has likely trickled truth in her husband and telling him that you are spreading rumors about her. That's the reason she's cutting off while contact. So here starts the shit storm. She will likely pine half the family against you and your husband to create enough trauma to drown out the affair. In her mind, she thinks how dare you try to destroy her affair in her safety net husband. Next step is your husband and you become unified and reveal to the family. It just goes to show you how many people actually get hurt from infidelity. The op responds. Half of family already knew before the husband. I was the only one who urged her to come clean. I even encouraged her to tell the truth because maybe her husband will forgive her. He's not the sharpest tool in the shed, but he loves her very much. Luckily, my husband and I are both on the same page and feel the same about everything regarding this situation. He says just let it go and let her go through her process of being mad at whoever. Easier said than done as a woman. Last comment from Mike's Tropical 61. Cheaters cannot accept responsibility for their actions. They are weak people that chase the next high, and that is all that is important to them. The affair went on for two years, which means she was all for the pleasure, the attention, never wanted to leave her marriage. Cheaters are super good at compartmentalization, and they almost lived two separate lives. Now, you made those two separate lives merge, made her accept responsibility, and she is deflecting that responsibility onto you. That is because cheetahs are weak and pathetic creatures and they have those issues like low self-esteem or self-worth. So she sees that action as an attack against her.